And we're live. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Hui Pham, Chair of Preservation Action Foundation, streaming in from Seattle, Washington, in the Stimson Green Mansion. You'll see a little bit of glimpse of that later when we pan to some of our watch parties around the country. But I'm here with my good friend, former supervisor, and now three-time co-host, Edward Hall. Hey, y'all. I'm Edward, Vice Chair of Preservation Actions Program and Policy Committee, and I'm here from San Antonio, Texas. Preservation Action serves as the national grassroots lobby for preservation. Uh, here at Preservation Action, we seek to make historic preservation a national priority by advocating to all branches of the federal government for sound preservation policy and programs. Preservation Action Foundation is the vehicle through which Preservation Action fulfills its educational and charitable mission. So in our jam-packed program tonight, you'll hear from Preservation Action board and staff working hard to keep advocacy at the forefront of our mission congressional leaders championing our bipartisan platform, and of course, advocates from all over the country whose livelihood, communities, and places that matter to them have benefited from the work of preservation action and continues to inspire the next generation of historic preservationists and grassroots advocates. And while tonight is about celebrating historic preservation, we also look to you for your support as we know that the future of preservation is important to us all and that our work must continue. Luckily for us, contributing tonight is both fun and simple. So if you haven't registered to handbid account yet, uh, scan the QR code in the corner of the screen, bid on silent auction items until November 9th, but six of the best travel packages will be sold off tonight. And if you have any difficulty, uh, we have our wonderful staff, Rob Naylor and Emily in the chat uh, for YouTube, handbid and Facebook. So definitely don't uh, hesitate to reach out to them. And while you're here, tell us where you're calling or watching in from. We'd love to see the, the impact of Preservation Action Foundation across the country. And finally, if you'd like to give directly, you can just text PA2023 to 44321 for instructions on making a tax-deductible donation today. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into our program. But before we do that, let's hear from Preservation Action Chairwoman Brie Grasicki in Savannah, Georgia. Brie will be followed by Preservation Action President Russ Carnahan, who served as the representative from Missouri's 3rd Congressional District from 2005 to 2013. Russ was also a co-chair of the Bipartisan Preservation Caucus. Uh, so we've got a great program for you all tonight. Uh, we let's go ahead and kick it off. Good evening. My name is Brianna Grosicki. I'm chairwoman of Preservation Action, the 501c4 partner for the Preservation Action Foundation. I wanted to get on here tonight and thank you for tuning in and participating in Advocacy at the Forefront, the virtual fundraiser and live auction, and wanted to encourage you all to bid high for preservation. Hi, everybody. It's Russ Carnahan. I am calling in from the historic Route 66 that winds through our neighborhoods here in St. Louis uh, with a big welcome and thank you to the Preservation Action Foundation annual auction. Uh, this year, we're doing it virtual again, uh, but we have people joining from around the country. And just a big thank you to our chairman, we fam, uh, all of the PAF board, our staff, and of course you, uh, those who have supported PAF and its mission uh, for historic preservation advocacy and education. Uh, it has made a huge difference in the progress we've been able to make the last few years. Uh, and your help tonight, either as attending, a donor, a sponsor, or a bidder, uh, will be part of our success for the next year ahead. Again, a giant thank you. And uh, as Route 66 winds its way uh, from Chicago to LA, uh, through so many states, it's that network of so many state and local organizations that has made uh, PA strong in its advocacy and PAF strong in its education mission. Thank you all so much for being a part of this and good luck for tonight's auction. Take care. And next, we'll need to thank our sponsors. Without the funding of these individuals and organizations, we couldn't do what we do. And with your support tonight, we can do even more. The title sponsor for Advocacy at the Forefront, Preservation Action Foundation's annual auction and fundraiser is A. Roy Smith. 
Champion sponsors are the National Trust for Historic Preservation, the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation, the City of San Antonio Office of Historic Preservation, and GBX Group. Supporter sponsors are Marvin Windows, Ray Ellis and Labrie Consulting, Gray and Pape Incorporated, and Patricia Kehoe. Sponsors in memory of Bruce McDougall are Jill McDougall, Carol and Joel Scholl, and Minette Bozell. Friends sponsors are Thomas, Nancy, and Carl Klein, and McDo Preservation. To all of our sponsors, thank you from the Preservation Action Foundation. So thank you for your continued support of the Preservation Action Foundation and for believing in the legacy that our late and beloved Director of Washington Operations, Bruce McDougall has left for all of us, including our Advocacy Scholars Program, which has been renamed in his honor. And speaking of the Advocacy Scholars Program, many of our past Advocacy Scholars are now Preservation Action Board members. Callie Brown is one of our most recent Advocacy Scholars. Let's hear from Callie on the impact of the Preservation Actions Foundation's flagship program. Hi, my name is Callie Brown and I was a Preservation Action Advocacy Scholar in 2021. I was a history minor during my time at Birmingham Southern College in Birmingham, Alabama. There, I got very interested in historic preservation. Birmingham has such a rich history and I loved hearing about plans of preservation throughout the city. One place, the AG Gaston Motel, which was a hot spot during the Civil Rights Movement, was recently preserved and I just absolutely love following that journey. So after graduating college and moving to Washington, D.C. in May of 2021, I was looking for a way to get more involved with preservation advocacy work. The Advocacy Scholars program was the perfect way to learn more about advocacy, whether that be grassroots efforts, federal lobbying, or state historic preservation office efforts. Even though the program was virtual, I still got to be face to face with congressional representatives and others working in preservation advocacy. Since then, I've joined the Preservation Action Board and Development Committee because of my background in fundraising. I've also met wonderful mentors and people have taught me so much about preservation. I would recommend this program to anyone looking to learn more about preservation advocacy or more about historic preservation in general. Support for Preservation Action Foundation is supporting the work, education, and resources needed to continue advocating for preservation across generations, industries, and even political lines. Next year, you'll hear from our leaders in Congress who are supporters of preservation policies and legislation. First up, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York. Good evening, I'm Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and I'm delighted to join you for Preservation Action's Advocacy at the Forefront, virtual fundraiser and auction. I wanna thank all of the advocates, state and local officials, business and community leaders, and preservation heroes. Thank you for your support and everything you do, working to save, sustain, and interpret our nation's historic places. From buildings, bridges, and monuments to battlefields, tribal lands, and cemeteries, America is blessed with an abundance of amazing historic treasures. These places enrich our communities. They teach us who we are. They show us what it means to truly be an American. And for these reasons, they have to be preserved. In recognition of the individual role that historic places play in our nation's cultural heritage, for several years, I've led a letter into Senate appropriators requesting funding for the Historic Preservation Fund, most recently for fiscal year 2023. This funding would include increases for state and tribal historic preservation offices and for competitive grant programs dedicated to preserving our nation's historic areas. As I continue to push for this important funding, I'm grateful to have the support of so many advocates and leaders like you. I look forward to continuing our work together and we'll keep fighting to protect our historic resources for future generations. Good evening, everyone, and thank you. Representative Mike Carey of Ohio's 15th District. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Advocacy at the Forefront. I'm Congressman Mike Carey of Ohio's 15th Congressional District. And it is my honor to help kick off this year's National Historic Preservation Conference. Like all of you, historic preservation is something I'm both personally and professionally passionate about. It's hard not to be passionate about this important work being done from Ohio. We are surrounded by beautiful historic structures in every town, every city across the state. 
The Buckeye State also consistently ranks among the top states in the country for the number of successfully completed historic tax credit projects. The word successfully is key. We all know how difficult these projects can be at times. My wife and I definitely know. Over the past few years, Megan and I have restored our historic home from the 1870s in German Village, right here in Columbus, Ohio. To restore something well over 150 years old, as you know, and to live there is an honor and a privilege well we just couldn't pass it up. During my short tenure in Congress, I've also led the efforts to help local communities with their preservation efforts and support legislation that preserves and safeguards our history. For example, I've supported appropriation dollars for historic buildings, and I'm currently helping developers in the city of Lancaster secure grant funding to save a historic shoe factory from demolition. And during the 117th Congress, I've had the opportunity to co-sponsor H.R. 2294. That's the Historic Tax Credit Growth Opportunity Act. This would make utilizing historic tax credits easier. I've also co-sponsored H.R. 6589, the Historic Preservation Enhancement Act, which would permanently authorize funding for Historic Preservation Fund and would meet the funding needs of current and future preservation projects. I'm also a proud member of the Bipartisan Historic Preservation Caucus that works to support bills just like this. And it's my hope in the 118th Congress, we will continue to push for legislation like this to encourage new projects and preservation. No square foot of our history is too small to be restored and preserved. In closing, I would like to thank Preservation Action, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and Heritage Ohio for inviting me to do this speech. And I look forward to hearing more about the work that they've accomplished this year and the many projects that they and historic preservation advocates, like all of you, have led across this country. I want to thank you and enjoy the rest of the National Historic Preservation Conference. Okay, and now this is where the real fun begins. I'm so excited to introduce our special guest auctioneer tonight. You may know her from The Bachelor Season 26, but most recently on Bachelor in Paradise Season 8. Or if you need any cultural resource management work done in the New England area, you might have actually employed her to consult for your project. Bill Chen serves as an architectural historian with the Public Archaeology Laboratory, a nonprofit CRM firm based in Rhode Island. Uh, Jill, I know this is a change of pace for you, but welcome and we're thrilled to have you here with us tonight. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so do you think uh, finding love on TV or ensuring that preservation programs across the country get better support and resources that they need? I think the latter. Okay. <laughs> I think so too. It's pretty tough yeah. out there, right? No, it's tough. It's tough yeah. on that. <laughs> well, while we load up uh, the big take it easy package from New Orleans, which is the one that will first be selling off, we're going to hear about the amazing work that the Louisiana Main Street program out of the Louisiana uh, State Historic Preservation Office is doing with their Paul Brune Historic Revitalization Grant funded by the Federal Historic Preservation Fund, which Preservation Action advocates for its expansion and continuation every year. And then we'll be back with more Auction and Jill Chin. Hello, I'm Ray Spriber, the director of the Louisiana Main Street Coordinating Program. We're part of the State Historic Preservation Office here in Baton Rouge. Uh, Louisiana Main Street has been the grateful recipient of two Paul Bruin Historic Revitalization Grants totaling about $1.3 million. Our office has used the funding from these grants to give subgrants to owners of historic commercial structures located within Main Street districts across the state of Louisiana. We're targeting buildings that are currently unoccupied or underoccupied with the hope that these buildings will once again be returned to commercial purposes. Paul Brun Grant is funded by the Historic Preservation Fund. Preservation Action advocates for the continuation and expansion of this fund every year. Your support tonight at the Preservation Action Foundation is direct support for programs such as ours that work with small communities across the state and across the nation to help revitalize their historic downtown areas. I'd like to share with you some of the images from the grant that were funded and um, hope you enjoy those. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you tonight.
Okay, so if uh, you're going to take a road trip to New Orleans with this package, you could definitely swing by all of those preservation projects that Ray mentioned. Uh, Jill, why don't you tell us what's in the New Orleans uh, package provided by Yolita Rausch, Daniel Del Sol, and Preservation Resource Center of New Orleans and Ralph Brandon Restaurant Group? Sure, I'd love to. So this is the big take it easy package in New Orleans. So that includes $500 gift card, which is up to two nights at the Hotel St. Vincent built circa 1860 in the Lower Garden District. A private walking tour, including a round of cocktails from the esteemed executive director, Danielle Desol of Preservation Resource Center of New Orleans, including complimentary membership, two books, a goodie bag, and free tickets to any of their upcoming events if you're traveling during those days and a $100 gift certificate to any of the Ralph Brennan restaurant group restaurants, including historic Brennan's or Napoleon House in the French Quarter or Ralph's on the park in Mid-City. Wow, so that is a jam-packed package. And right now, the, the bid is very low, only at $390. So you, until it reaches like $700, it's it's, you're going to make a deal on it. So I don't know who paddle number 182 is, but we definitely need to uh, ramp it up. Each item tonight is only going to uh, be auctioned for maybe three to four minutes each until we see it slow down. Um, but we're going to talk about the New Orleans package until we see some movement on this. So uh, Jill, have you been to New Orleans? I have not been to New Orleans. It's one of the top on my list. I feel like as a preservationist, you've got to go there. Yeah, there's like so many uh, so many historic resources down there. It's like one of the big preservation cities, and that's why they submitted one of these packages. Uh, Edward, have you been down there? I've been a handful of times. Uh, my first time was uh, during Mardi Gras, and that was an experience. Uh, but most recently, uh, 2018. But I want to go back. I was telling Sarah uh, about a month ago that I want to go back. There's a restaurant, uh, Mosquito Supper Club if any of you all have heard of that, that I really want to eat at. So oh, well. I don't know, maybe we'll need to make a trip over. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I think last time I went was actually for a preservation uh, program because we got to do a culinary exchange uh, in the city of San Antonio where I used to work uh, with Edward. Uh, they had a, um, it was a UNESCO city of gastronomy. So we decided to trade three of our chefs for three of their chefs. And it was a great trip to see historic uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. So that's very cool. Um, in our time here, the package has not moved. So we're gonna, we're gonna call it a steal here at 390. Let's get one or two more bids up there before we start you know, cashing them out. Um, I know you guys might be ramping up for some of the later ones. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Have your smartphones ready, a second tab on your computer, wherever you're watching from. Uh, we're going to go to Virginia City, Montana, then uh, Indianapolis. So definitely load up. Um, Jill, tell us why someone needs to start bidding on this great deal in New Orleans. I feel like this is a great deal. You've got $500 gift card, which is two nights for a stay at Hotel, Hotel St. Vincent. That was built in circa 1860. That is my favorite time period. I would kill to stay there. Um, also, a hundred dollar gift certificate to restaurants. Come on, it's a you guys have Edward. You've had some of the food there. What can you say about it? I don't know. I think I need to text Sarah and have her get her little bid paddle up. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, you know what? We I think we may not have uh, we may not have an accurate. The package is moved. Oh, really? So Let me there's more. To, there are more bids coming in. Refresh. So, okay, 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 okay. Let's see. What do you see how much it is on there right now? Oh, well, uh, Shannon, uh, also from San Antonio, just said it's up to $760. Oh, wow. Okay, it's so on there's the movement. I need to refresh my little widget here. It's up to <laughs> 700. Um, let's see if it moves any more and then we'll call it. Um, Edward, what do you have any any last appeal on, on this Louisiana package before we call it? Uh, yeah, well, um, I think we and I are probably going to talk about food in most of the places that. <laughs> most of these city packages. So uh, Pascal Manali's is another uh, favorite of mine. Uh, just make sure you abide by the dress code, which I found out the hard way. Uh, but it's up to $850 now. Uh, Trisha from Miami just said that. So 
Um, I don't know. Maybe we can get this up to 900. Okay. Edward, you check on your back end to see if we get it to 900. I'm going to make sure I have the correct widget here, but we're going to close it in one minute. So any last words from Jill? Guys, I think we can get it up there. I think this is a fantastic deal. Uh, see New Orleans. I feel like this is a great deal. Let's get it up. Any, any more last minute bids can get in there. All right, Edward, are you seeing anything else? I, as far as I know, it's still at 850. Um, so anyone still at 850. So, um, I don't know. I guess by the time that I get through saying this, if it hasn't moved from 850, then Jill, you can carry us on. Right. Okay. Uh, this is going to be the first one of the night. Uh, Jill, go ahead and count slowly. <laughs> All righty. Three, two, one. Sold. Okay. Uh, the big take it easy package is sold at 850. Rob on our back end will close it and let us see where we're next on our list i think uh i think you're queuing us off on this one edward so let's uh hear from elizabeth rosin who's also uh, a pa board member uh she actually won the package for virginia city montana last year uh, so let's hear what she has to say about this uh and then we can get into it and we want to give a shout out to pat jacobs uh uh, Architecture Trio Inc. and also Montana Heritage Commission for providing this great package. Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth Rosen with Rosen Preservation in Kansas City. Last year, I was the big winner of the Virginia City package at the PA auction. I can't tell you what a great time my family and I had exploring Virginia City this summer. Pat was a fabulous host. We learned all about the gold mining history of the region and saw some fabulous historic sites. Treat yourself, it's a win-win, bid high uh, for Virginia City and support PA. Okay, that was uh, great. You, so you, you heard it from a auction winner of that package uh, herself and Pat Jacobs added a few more items this year. Jill, why don't you tell us what's in it? All right, so this is a U struck gold in Virginia City, Montana. So this one's super family friendly. We have four guests with a three night stay at the National Register listed CW Rank House guest cabin. Rank's merchantile $20 gift card and gift basket, including Virginia City Preservation Alliance publication of The Nugget, $100 value. A private guided tour of Robber's Roost Station and Tavern between the mining communities of Bannock and Virginia City. An evening of appetizers and cocktails on the grand porch of the CW Rank House overlooking the mountains and historic Virginia City. A hundred dollar voucher to the Wells Fargo Steakhouse. Four tickets to the hugely hilarious Brewery Follies Theater Show. Four tickets to the illustrious Virginia City Players Melodrama. And two day vigilante pass which includes train rides, painting for gold, and entrance to the Nevada City History Museum. This one sounds like a ton of fun for families. I think this is a great deal. Yeah, sure, so, that's a, it's a package deal, a built-in family vacation. What yeah. else could you ask for? Yeah, for a four-night stay. So on my end, I'm seeing 500 right now. Um, so I'm gonna try to reload that widget to make sure we have a, a live on-screen display of where we're at. But while we're at 500, we're gonna be refreshing in the background uh, keeping you guys updated, but let's get that bid up because it's for a four night stay up to a family of four or friends of four. Jill, how many friends can you get together to go gold panning? Ooh, I could probably get at least 20 to go gold panning. I think for four people, that is such a great deal. It sounds like this package has everything you need for a chock full four days in Virginia city. Okay. That was a great appeal. We're up at 600. Okay. Edward, have you been to Montana? I haven't, um, but I need to check that out. Sarah wants to go. So I don't know, maybe uh, maybe if Sarah's at home with her digital paddle, she can raise that. <laughs> I like how you're, um, you're just cueing her the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's see, did we, okay, we're up at 700. So it's moving. Um, okay. And we got a few we got a few minutes on this one. So we really need to uh, get those people with either lots of friends or 
a big family that wants to go out there for a nice vacation, not in one of those crazy loud cities uh, like New Orleans. If you're not trying to go to Mardi Gras, you come here for a gold panning. It comes with like three or four vaudeville shows and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, there's a vigilante package. I don't even know what that means, but it comes with unlimited train rides. Uh, Joe, well, it looks what, else, like we're, uh, what else do you think we, we need to get people out there for? I mean, any opportunity to go out to Montana, big sky country, I've heard it's gorgeous. Um, I think I, I've never stayed at a National Register listed guest cabin. I think that's pretty cool. Um, get the whole family out there um, and just enjoy enjoy a, a peaceful, peaceful vacation. Yeah, we're up to, it looks like $800 right now. So uh, for you folks that live in hot, muggy climates during the summertime, um, as someone who does enjoy going to the Mountain West, uh, June, July, August is a perfect time to go. Uh, so take the kids while they're out of school or, you know, during your summer break from work, whatever it may be, should be a great time. Yeah, another suggestion is that you don't have to take anyone. You could have the whole place to yourself, finally get away from everyone and enjoy those uh, those scenic views that you see in the package uh, item scroll. So there's lots to do there. Um, I think we'll close it in one minute. So uh, Jill, let's hear one more thing from what you have to say to, to sell us off. I mean, honestly, you can strike gold. It, with this gold panning included, you know, you can you could triple your money. I think it's a great deal. I didn't even think of it like that. So you're saying that if yeah. if you're bidding a thousand on this and you find some gold nuggets, you you could get all your money back and even earn some. Exactly, and it goes to a good cause. So you're up. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, <laughs> okay, Edward. Anything else before we close it? I think we're at a good pace at eight hundred. We're we're seeing some slowing down. Uh, it's a huge deal. Um, huge deal. Any last words? Uh, we're, we're still at 850, I think. Maybe we're at 800 or 850. Uh, so, um, hey, folks, like, it, it, I mean, this is a good steal. This is it's a deal here. So if you want to bid, you've got, I don't know, until Jill counts okay. down to, to do that. Yep. All right. I'll refresh it one more time. We're still at 800. So, Jill, okay. go ahead and count down. Uh, Rob, get ready to close it. All right, guys, going once, going twice, sold for the U Struck Gold in Virginia City, Montana. For 800. Thank for you. 800. Okay, Edward, um, before you cue us on the next video, I'm going to prepare to uh, call a watch party in Indianapolis after this, uh, after this Newburgh, New York package. So get ready for that. But uh, go ahead and cue us up, Edward. Yeah, so uh, let's head to Newburgh, New York, and we'll hear from Naomi Herson Rinksgong from the Department of Small Interventions. Hi, my name is Naomi Herson Rinksgong. I'm a resident here in Newburgh, New York, a small river city about 60 miles north of New York City in the beautiful Hudson Valley. I'm also the founder of Department of Small Interventions. This is a firm I founded that launches place-based projects that aim to build civic awareness and social infrastructure here in Newburgh. In 2015, the city had counted about 700 vacancies in our city of four square miles. Uh, there was obvious blight and the question was what could be done. And so I started zeroing in on why did these buildings become vacant? How long have they been vacant? What are the property ownership? What is the, the policies? And created a, a a toolkit that was both in English and Spanish to explain this process to the larger neighborhood. And now that COVID has subsided, we are now taking this project to the next level where we are working with different um, community-based organizations and we are working together on doing walking tours of these uh, ordinary historic corridors as well as looking at the pain points of the Architectural Review Commission um, and how we can uh, create workshops that can incrementally stabilize, improve, or just build the sense of community around these vacant structures. The most exciting part of this project is the open call for art interventions that we launched earlier this, this spring, 
and what we will be doing is working with an architect that will be doing artistic interventions uh, on one of the properties. So stay tuned for that. Other projects that Department of Small Intervention works on deal with transportation or small business revitalization. And so all these different projects are interdisciplinary and all go towards restoring the historic uh, grandiosity that Newburgh has. So come visit and you won't be disappointed. Wow, that is some really, really cool work. And uh, I always like it when we're able to highlight, you know, those lesser known preservation powerhouse cities uh, with both a feature and an auction item. So Jill, tell us uh, the Discover Newburgh, New York and Hudson Valley package. Yeah, absolutely. So what you're gonna get is a two night stay in a renovated apartment in one of Newburgh's oldest homes built circa 1790 once home to a U.S. House of, Repre House of Representative and Postmaster General. Uh, you're going to get a tour of mid-19th century Nubra by architectural historian Stephen Baltus. Across the Hudson River, enjoy an annual family membership to Storm King Art Center, which is a 500-acre outdoor museum where visitors experience a large-scale sculpture and site-specific site commissions under open sky. And you'll be able to dine on top-notch cuisine at the Liberty Street Bistro in a lovely historic commercial area with a $100 gift certificate. Now, that art center sounds really cool. 500 acres? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of walking. It's a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a great package. Uh, you know, I grew up in a Newburgh, but it was the one in Indiana, so it's very different. But I do want to visit <laughs> this one, too. I think this is the one slightly uh, more well-known. Uh, Edward, what do, you, what do you think about this package? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I've been in Newburgh. Uh, so, um, Hudson Valley is a beautiful place, and um, if you have a connection, you could also go to see West Point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're looking for something that's uh, out in the country somewhat, this is great. Um, and plus, you could probably fly in the Stewart right there and may not have to even deal with uh, flying to LaGuardia or Newark or any mm -hmm. of those other airports. So, um, for sure, check it out. Um, I'm standing by live to try to make sure that we've got the correct bid information. So if y'all are interested in this, go ahead and get your bids up. Yeah, so right now we're at 600. Uh, I know my little widget on screen has like a one bid delay. So it says 525, but on the screen, it's actually 600. So that's still a steal. Uh, we wanna get it closer to you know 800, 1,000 if you're being generous tonight to, to come to a, a new place that you haven't been for. Or if you're like Edward, you can revisit uh, because I'm sure Edward hasn't been to that 500 acre art gallery or mm. those other historic places. I mean, the Hudson Valley has plenty of history in there. Um, and it's kind of like a nice getaway for one or two people. What do you think, Jill? What if someone said to you, hey, do you wanna go to Newburgh, New York? Oh, I'd probably tell them to put a ring on it, honestly. <laughs> I feel like this is right up my alley. Um, I want to do something where I can be outside, see some sculptures. Um, I feel like this is definitely more of a low-key package, so it's just good for, for some time to connect with either that special someone or a friend or yourself. Yeah, connect with yourself, absolutely. I mean, um, but you, you heard it here yourself. You don't need to go through a rose ceremony, you just need tickets to Newburgh, New York at a two night that's overnight right. stay to hang out with Jill. So that's that's oh. bidding enough. <laughs> um, okay, I think I we're good on this that. one. Um, we're, we're slowly climbing, still at 600. Let's give it one more minute. Uh, Edward, anything else to say about the Discover New York package before I call our watch party in Indianapolis to load up the Indianapolis package? I don't have anything else to say, so um, I don't know. Maybe if somebody else wants to get another bid up, they have until Jill counts down. Okay, so, so we just went up to 675, so it is moving, and I was correct on my on-screen widget. We have a one bid delay because now it says 600 on, on here, but it is at 675. Um, because it went up, I'll ask Jill to say, oh, it moved again to 750. So people do want to come out here. They do want to uh, invite Jill <laughs> to, <laughs> to meet him out there. That works. So definitely, um, Jill, let's give a few more words on this one before we close it. 
All right. I'm definitely going to be getting some DMs after this one and take me to the Hudson Valley, um, but I'm not complaining. I think that's a great place to go. Um, I would love to stay in a house built in circa 1790. I would love to see what that looks like today. So I think this is a great opportunity um, to, to be able to experience this. Great. Okay. I think we're at a, a very healthy one, uh, 750. So let's okay. call it. Alrighty, going once, going twice, and sold for the Hudson Valley. That's great. Yay. Okay, uh, make sure to follow Jill Chin on Instagram and slide <laughs> into her DMs. Uh, she says she's available. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's see. We said we we're going to Indianapolis. Um, so, uh, I'm so glad uh, to see this package come back because, as you know. Uh, Marsh Davis, uh, executive director of Indiana Landmarks, who used to be our uh, auctioneer, said to to throw the baton away, give it to somebody else. Um, so we're glad to have Jill on here. Um, but the Indianap Indianapolis package is extremely um, popular every single year. So definitely tune in uh, in the next few minutes. But before we do that, I want us to check out uh, what Indiana Landmark's premier Black Heritage Preservation Program is doing. So let me load that. Hello, my name is Eunice Trotter, and I am the director of Indiana Landmark's brand new Black Heritage Preservation Program. Now, the reason that this program started is because of the need to help prevent the erasure of black heritage in Indiana. It is important because black heritage is American heritage. The vestiges of its remaining remnants are very much in need of additional research and resources to even uncover its existence. Uh, for example, we have been working in Fox Lake, which was a, a resort community in northern Indiana. Uh, that was the recreational area for so many individuals who weren't able, because of segregation, to go anyplace else. Uh, here in Indianapolis, there is so much to be done. We have, uh, all, of course, the Indiana Avenue area. Much of that heritage has been uh, eliminated due to development in that near downtown area that was home to so much culture, so much art, so much entrepreneurship without any evidence of its existence today. Now other projects that we're going to be working on include the Means Manor in, in Gary, Indiana. The Means Manor neighborhood was developed by a Hoosier black builder who became one of the largest builders in the Midwest. And his house is in a, a deteriorating state. The first approach is to build capacity. We need the researchers, the grant writers, and so forth. The second part of that approach, it focuses on challenging the values of historic preservation boards and officials, which in my opinion, favor artifacts over the story. It is evidence of our contribution to uh, Indiana history, to Indiana progress, and to Indiana future. Okay, we're back, and we're back. Uh, so I think I was able to get Indiana Landmarks watch party. Uh, there's Marsh himself uh, handing off the, the auction baton. Why don't you guys wave and say hi? So that's everyone from the Indianapolis uh, watch party. We're excited to have you. Um, yeah, so I, look, you get, if you bid on this next package, you get to hang out with them. So uh, I'll hand it off to Jill uh, to read the Indianapolis package. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. All right. So with the Indianapolis, Indianapolis package, you get a one-night overnight stay in the Historic Tax Credit Project Bottle Works Hotel in the Art Deco Coca-Cola plant, including an exclusive tour of the campus, Dinner at the National Historic Landmark Athenaeum's Rathskeller Restaurant, tours of the Athenaeum, aka Das Deutsch House, National Historic Landmark James Whitcomb Riley House, and walking tour of the historic Lockerbie Square Historic District, all of which are in walking distance of the Bottleworks Hotel. I think that's great. 
totally walkable. You might not even spend that much on Ubers or Lyfts. Oh, wow. So everyone is, is already bidding. So it's already starting at 700 <laughs> is a great appeal. Um, so I actually grew up in, in Indiana and obviously Indianapolis has plenty of history. Marsh is always trying to get me to come back there, but, uh, I love the coast too much, but you know, with this package is a, is a good reason to, to visit. Edward, have you been to Indiana? I have. We, I told you that my, I have a cousin that went to the same high school as you in Evansville. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times that. I have to tell you this. Yeah, so. uh, I, actually, I have cousins in Indianapolis, too. So uh, on both my mom and dad's side, I have family in Indiana. Yeah. So if you guys uh, win this package, you get to go on all these historic preservation tours and potentially hang out with uh, my parents or Edward's cousins. <laughs> uh, Jill, do you, have, do you have any family in Indianapolis or have you ever been? No, I have never been, but I've heard a lot about the hospitality over there. So. I, I feel like I have to definitely give it a shot. I haven't explored that part of the country much, so this would be a great opportunity. Yeah, I mean, come through, come through to the Midwest. Um, there's plenty of history there, plenty of very active uh, statewide organizations like Indiana Landmarks, uh, Heritage Ohio, uh, Illinois Landmarks, and the Skyline Council. We're all very uh, appreciative of their partnership with us. They come to uh, Lobby Day and advocacy a National Historic Preservation Advocacy Week with us uh, this year in DC uh, as part of our flagship uh, program with Preservation Action. Jill, are you gonna come to uh, Advocacy Week in DC with us this year? You know, I just might. My sister lives down in DC, so that's even more of a reason for me to go down. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah, absolutely. So we're still here at 700. Um, this is a preservation lovers package like everything here is to go see historic sites and uh stay in an amazing historic tax credit art deco coca-cola bottling plant mm -hmm. uh what what else do they need to know about this package jill to sell us off tonight i feel like you've got a little bit of everything in historic preservation you've got historic tax credits you've got national historic landmarks You've got good food and you've got a walking tour of a historic district. So I feel like it's a preservationist dream to be able to experience all of those different things in one place. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows, Marsh Marsh may even come through with that uh, antique car that he had last year and give you a chauffeur tour of a historic district. Yeah, I mean, the, the secret about this package is that uh, Marsh is very generous and always throws in secret random stuff, whether it's a dinner or a car ride or another historic preservation tour. Um, and obviously, you can even visit uh, Eunice Trotter with the Black Heritage Preservation Program to see what they're up to. Uh, like she said in her video, it's a brand new program for recognizing, you know, these under underrepresented histories all uh, across our country. So it's very important uh, to go out there. But there's also a lot of fun to be had in Indianapolis and Indiana. Um, so we're still at 700. Um, I'll let Jill say a few more sentences, but every year we do have one package that comes away as a steal just because people are either waiting for another one or uh, they just don't have their their fingers ready enough for the, the bid. So Jill, any last words for this before we sell off at 700? I feel like you guys might be sleeping on Indianapolis, honestly. I feel like if you are a fan, if you, there's any Coca-Cola fans out there, I know people are diehard Coca-Cola fans, any DC lovers, some Diet Coke girls out there. I feel like <laughs> this is your dream. <laughs> so I feel like this is a this is a great opportunity in the Bottle Works Hotel. It sounds so awesome. Stay in a historic tax credit project. I don't know, guys. I think you're sleeping on this one. Okay. Uh, Edward, one sentence, then pass it off to Jill to countdown. Uh, well, I, I look, if y'all get a bit up, get a bit in. <laughs> this is a steal, and uh, you'll really enjoy hanging out with Marsh uh, anytime I'm around him or talking with him. Uh, I really enjoy what all he has to say. Uh, and he's always got some jokes that he throws in, so <laughs> get your bit up. Okay, so uh, that's fine. We'll save it for the last the last three or the last two, I think we were making great progress. So Jill, count us off uh, for 700. All right, for 700, going once, going twice, and sold for 700. Ready? All right, so moving on, let's see where we are. 
Okay, so now that we're winding down, um, let's hear from Latinos in heritage conservation on the important work that they're doing nationwide before we head into the San Antonio package, which is where Edward lives and I used to live. And I'll be calling in on the San Antonio watch party uh, from our secretary, Rachel Retaliata. So uh, get ready for my FaceTime call. But first, Latinos in heritage conservation. Hello, I'm Lobos here at Preservation Action Foundation's annual fundraiser and auction. My name is Salem Mota Casper, and I am the Executive Director for Latinos and Heritage Conservation. LHC has been hard at work helping to protect Latinx heritage and historic sites throughout the country. This year, we have so much to celebrate, including hosting Congreso, the only national conference solely dedicated on the conservation and preservation of Latinx heritage and history. We're also thrilled that we hired our first staff, including myself, to help continue this work and advocacy to help conserve Latinx sites and living culture throughout the United States. For those that have supported Latinx preservation, Latinos and heritage conservation's work and growth, we want to thank you. As we enter into the new year, we look forward to continuing advocating for historic preservation and cultural conservation at the local, state, and federal levels. We also look forward to continuing advocacy with our partners, Preservation Action Foundation in 2023. Please stay in touch and follow our work at www.latinoheritage.us. Muchisimas gracias, and I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, and we're back, and I I think I finally uh, reached out to the San Antonio watch party. So everyone from San Antonio, wave hello. So uh, they are about to pitch a very uh, jam-packed package that goes for lots of money every year. Uh, so make sure to bid high and hang out with them. Uh, so Jill, tell us what's in the San Antonio package so that people can go hang out with these folks. Okay, so this package, again, it could be good for families or could be good for a bunch of friends. It includes four persons included accommodations for up to three nights in a wonderful mid-century modern home, complimentary meals from original Mexican restaurant and Little Rain Proust House along the famous Riverwalk, and Pete's Taco House along the Museum Reach, four tickets to the National Register listed San Antonio Zoo, San Antonio Museum of Art, and the historic Lone Star Brewery, Go, Go Rio Riverwalk Barge Cruise. So that's a bunch of stuff right there. A uh, private tour of the historic Pearl Brewery redevelopment and the Kelso House Learning Lab in the historic Monte Vista neighborhood, and a gift basket with more local goodies. That sounds like a lot of stuff and a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, if you're looking behind me, this is the Arneson River Theater. So look, I try to walk on the river walk every day at lunch. Uh, this time of year in San Antonio is perfect. Uh, and a lot of the stuff listed up on that list, you'll really enjoy if you come here. Uh, our zoo is phenomenal. It's actually in an old quarry. Uh, so you'll really enjoy that as well as the river walk. The Pearl is, is great to go hang out at. Uh, and did I mention the river walk has an open container policy. So uh, you can get whatever beverage you like, walk around, and then get on a river cruise uh, and just have a good time. So uh, let's go ahead and get the bid started. Um, we, do you have anything to add, former San Antonio? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I might bid on this package because it gives me an excuse to come back there uh, with accommodations, unless you got room for me on your couch, Edward. Um, but no, this is a this is a hugely jam packed package, as you as. You mentioned it's a world heritage site so that means there are the historic missions that you can go out to including uh the alamo plan that they're trying to reimagine year after year uh but in the little icon you see the pearl brewery a uh, historic area where it's like what is it like a billion dollar re redevelopment and has one of the best restaurants uh in the area it's um what's the one with the uh with the uh, chef that was a James Beard nominee, Edward. That's one of Cured. your favorites. Yeah, Cured. Cured. Yeah, so that one is in, um, I think, in like uh, the president's quarter of Pearl Brewery that got turned into a basically a uh, charcuterie restaurant. 
Um, Jill, you said this one was your one of your favorite packages that you were excited about tonight. Uh, why? Why is that? Well, I feel like for four people, great deal. Um, I also would love to go to San Antonio Zoo, the Museum of Art. Um, I feel like there is just this is everything is already planned for you. You know, this is just kind of a grab and go type deal. You get there and you have everything planned out. There's so much stuff to do and it looks gorgeous. Um, if you're looking for somewhere a little bit warmer to go, if you're like me and you're up north and you want to escape the cold for a little bit, I feel like this is a great opportunity to do so. Edward, how, how cold is it there right now? Uh, it is a brisk 70 degrees. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, so definitely cash out on, on this package. Go there uh, when it's not so hot, because I know in the summers, though, you guys still have, you know, 106 degree weather. Uh, but uh, definitely around this time, uh, it's beautiful. You see the um, the holiday lights all around the river walk. Um, it's a great time. Uh, and we're definitely thankful for the Conservation Society of San Antonio and the Office of Historic Preservation uh, for sponsoring this package. It is it has a lot of gems in it that just people don't realize it's there because it's more than just a river walk. That's like what people go there for, but they stay for the 32 historic districts. Unless you guys are up at 33 now. How many you got, Edward? What you said. <laughs> 32. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. So right now we're at 900. We saw the jump from 800 to 900. Um, and we're doing great on time. So we'll let this one linger just a little bit because we want to see it. Uh, one of the package reach the thousand dollar mark. So if anyone wants to jump in on this jam pack package, uh, Jill, sell it off for them just a little bit more. Man, four people in a mid-century modern home. I feel like that's a lot of fun. Um, also, all the food there sounds so good. Edward, can you speak about the food? I know you're a big food guy. Uh, yeah, Edward, yeah, so you're a big food guy. Big uh, food guy. He's been talking about the food. <laughs> we we and I used to uh, contemplate and argue about food, but um, there are a lot of spots. It, it, I mean, if you it, depending on what you like, obviously Tex-Mex is something that's pretty big here, uh, but there are a handful of uh, you can find just about whatever you want. Um, there are a lot of good Asian spots here. Uh, really, it's about if you know where to look, if you know who to talk to. Um, this is just me personally. Obviously, stay away from the touristy spots. Uh, find something that's great and local owned, and, and you usually won't be disappointed. Uh, but yeah, most of the restaurants at the Pearl, you're not going to go wrong with those. Sure. Absolutely. So uh, last chance to bid on this package, uh, but I will let Jill count us off to see the great deal for party of four for $900 in World Heritage Weekend in San Antonio. Jill, go ahead. Alrighty, so going once, going twice, and sold for $900, enjoy San Antonio. All right, okay, we are approaching our last uh, video feature and our last auction item or auction package for here in Seattle. So uh, let me wind us down with uh, one more feature from Chase Cantrell of Detroit, who is working at Building Community Value, and it's aptly named, and it certainly speaks for itself. So let's hear it from Chase. Hello, my name is Chase Cantrell, and I'm the executive director and founder of Building Community Value. Founded almost seven years ago, this 501c3 based in Detroit, Michigan, provides real estate training, resources, and ongoing technical assistance to residents of Detroit, Hamtramck, and Highland Park, Michigan. Given that this area used to be one of the wealthiest in the nation in the early 20th century, Detroit has such a rich and deep architectural heritage. However, like many Rust Belt cities, we've seen continued disinvestment along many of our commercial corridors and a real and impactful loss of residential property due to mortgage and tax foreclosure. However, far from being content with the notion that any use of space is better than nothing, Detroiters repeatedly prove that no other group is better positioned to reimagine and redevelop Detroit's neighborhoods than the city's legacy residents. Thus, building community value through our program, Better Buildings, Better Blocks, provides residents with knowledge to perform pro forma modeling to know whether a project is feasible before they get started, 
Connections to resource partners like local banks and community development financial institutions, as well as architects, contractors, and city officials. And we do both one-on-one -on -one and group technical assistance during the course, as well as once someone has graduated from the course. We see many of our graduates go back into their communities to, to do one to four unit uh, rehabilitation and preservation, as well as some small commercial rehab as well. What we didn't know when we first set out to create the program is that we were also creating a vast network of alumni. Pulling from all seven districts throughout the city of Detroit, we see alumni who are eager to meet other cohort members and to continue to share knowledge far beyond the course itself. So we have quarterly alumni mixers and we continue to share knowledge with this group as often as possible. We also advocate on behalf of the small scale developer alongside other organizations who serve this group. So I wanna thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about our organization and building community value is proud to continue to keep advocacy at the forefront with all of you. All right, so we all know the work needed to keep a seat at the table at the state and federal level for preservation policy and support. But whenever I see, uh, you know, grassroots efforts like Chase is doing in his beloved community, I know that our collective advocacy can make a difference to places that matter to all of us. And so I am so excited to show what the first floor of my office building looks like right now uh, for the watch party here in Seattle. So everyone from Seattle, wave. Uh, so yeah, that is the the library of the Stimson Green Mansion. We're all having a good time. Uh, I'm glad that the streaming worked, and I'm working double duty here. Uh, so yeah, so Jill, why don't you tell us what's in the Taste of Seattle package provided by Mayflower Park Hotel and the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation? All right, I'd love to. So. The Taste of Seattle includes a one overnight stay with deluxe accommodations at the historic Mayflower Hotel built in 1927 in downtown Seattle. It includes breakfast for two at the Andaluca and a special welcome basket. This package also includes two tickets to the Wing Luke Museum of the Asian American Experience and a $25 gift card to the historic Panama Hotel Tea House, both in the Chinatown International District. Uh, it also includes a private tour of the Stimson Green Mansion, as you just saw, in First Hill in the headquarters, which is the headquarters of the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation. Uh, it also includes, I love what you did here, a historic reservation with Preservation Action Foundation Chair We Fam, dinner for two at a restaurant in the historic building or the Chinatown International District. So does this mean that they get to go on a date with you? Yes, that is true. They can that not date true. me. Um, <laughs> and it's actually dinner for two. So, you know, I have to talk to two people at the same time, which I know okay. I heard is hard, Jill, talking to two people at the same time. Yes, being in a love triangle is quite hard. So you can be the bachelor <laughs> for the night. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, come come enjoy the Taste of Seattle uh, bid high. Right now it's at 675, which is a, still a great deal because you get that hotel stay, you get all that other stuff, and you get to go to a historic restaurant of your choice in a historic building or in our National Register District, Chinatown International District. So when this package was um, was redeemed last year, we actually went to, uh, Din, um, uh, I, th I think it's called Tung Tai, and it's one of the oldest uh, Chinese restaurants in the city and it's actually where Bruce Lee worked and we tried to get uh, a seat at the Bruce Lee booth but I think it was just on display at that time so we had a great time um, so yeah keep keep on bidding this one up uh, before we go because this is the last auction item and we're gonna close the program soon Edward do you have anything to say about this package I also why know, haven't you visited me yet look I've got a lot of people that I have to visit and I have to prioritize things. But, uh, you know, it, we're going back to Sarah. Maybe she can get her virtual paddle back up. Uh, <laughs> it, she wants to visit Seattle. Uh, previously, uh, you know, my brother and sister-in-law lived in Seattle. So there was uh, uh, a common reason for me to go up. But no, I, you know, we should bid on this. And uh, it can be like old times when uh, you, Sarah and I used to go eat together. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's a it's a great package. 
you know, I, I'll treat you guys out to a good time. I'll throw in some extra random stuff. Uh, the Wing Luke Museum is incredible. Um, Jill, have you have you been up to Seattle? I haven't been to Seattle. It's crazy because I haven't been to any of these places that were selling off these packages. So I feel like I need to to do a cross country trip. But yeah, I would love to see Seattle. It's again on one top of my list. Um, I feel like that Pacific Northwest area has a lot to offer, um, and I'm super interested in it historic preservation wise. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe you should bid on this package, and then you can have dinner with me. But uh, you can do that without the package as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad that's that's an offer. Yeah. Um, um, so we're still at six seventy five, um, but we are approaching at the end of the hour here. So this one could be the deal of the night because all the rest, you know, reach you know their general market value and for the, for the good cause. Um, if we don't see this movement, oh, it just went up to 750. Okay, so all that rambling I did definitely worked out. It's at 750, which is a good place to stop at. But um, I'll let uh, Edward and Jill just give one more appeal before we close the last item of tonight. Uh, and then we wrap up our program. So uh, Edward, why don't you start us off with anything else to say about hanging out with me and Historic Seattle? Uh no, I'm just curious of how uh, hanging out with you is going to impact the bidding. Uh, and I think that also depends on where you take people to eat. Uh, it's so their choice. Have, it's, I'll give them a list of historic star. restaurants. How many choose. dollar signs? Are we talking yeah. about four dollar signs or, or are you going to be like me and, and do two? All, all dollar signs, up to four dollar signs, maximum dollar oh. signs. Is there a Michelin star restaurant in Seattle? Oh, yeah. We, See, I mean, he's like he's regretting it a little bit. He's like, yeah, yeah. there's a Michelin star. Let me log into the hand bid real quick. Man. There you go. Yeah, I'd yeah. say people should get their money's worth. Absolutely, Jill. Any last words on this one as we close out for the hour? You know, I personally would love to see you be the bachelor for the night with two yeah. other people. So I think that this is a great opportunity for some people to get some some two on one time with you and learn all i mean you're the expert i think i would i would pick your brain about this area i think this is a great opportunity to learn a lot about seattle yeah well thank you that's very kind of you to assume jill and very uh presumptive of you edward on on the the limits of my of my dining abilities but we're doing good jill let's close out the last item of tonight for 750. okay 750 so going once going twice and sold taste of seattle for 750. wow that was great and we are approaching the hour you guys have heard from congressional members from preservation organizations and agencies across the country we're so excited for uh for advocacy in 2023 all the work that we're doing uh is always needed so we're proud to partner with preservation action for advocacy week so mark your calendars for march 13 through 16 to join us in person in washington dc for national historic preservation advocacy week and get updates from preservationaction.org on our instagram and facebook and uh, before we let you go if you didn't see uh any items that you wanted tonight or maybe you did but uh someone outbid you you know, don't hesitate to text PA2023 to 44321 uh, to donate directly and supporting our cause. It's a tax deductible donation. It goes directly to, uh, you know, making sure that we run a tight, efficient advocacy and education machine, making sure that preservation has a seat at the table and presence on Capitol Hill as we advocate for the Historic Preservation Fund. Uh, funding for state historic preservation offices and uh, tribal historic preservation offices, the Paul Brune Historic Revitalization Grant Program, and all of the uh, the subordinate programs across the country. Uh, Edward, do you have any last words before we let them go? No, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, you know, everybody's looking forward to Advocacy Week, so make sure that that's on your to-do list to plan for. Uh, this is our first Advocacy Week in two years. Uh, so for sure, there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm about that. So make sure you're planning for that. And then, like we said, there are a lot of items that are on line on hand bid right now. Uh, go ahead and make sure you're bidding on those. There's a Memphis package there. Uh, Memphis holds a very dear place in my heart. So make sure you check that out. You sure won't have you will have definitely have a good time. You don't want to miss it. 
Um, but that's all that I've got. Jill, do you have anything? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys for having me on. Um, I fully support all the amazing work that you guys do. I thoroughly encourage everybody to go and bid on silent auction items um, because it just helps this incredible organization. So thank you for having me on. It's an incredible cause. Thank you, Jill. And thank you, Edward, for joining me. And with that, I will slowly end our stream.